Uh, so in terms of um, the new features uh, that have been added to CXM since the last Academy, um, there's quite a wide range uh, of different things. I'll touch on some of the kind of background stuff first, and then I've got some videos to, to walk you through some examples. We've introduced a, a timeline in activity uh, to the time, uh, this is a timeout of around about 10 minutes when you're on the, the CXM timeline. Uh, there's a new customer uh, record permission such that when you, uh, in the dashboard page, uh, we remove the ability, if you want to, to actually go and create a new contact record. So they have to go and search for that first. Uh, we've been doing some background work on OpenID Connect uh, discovery. So that's all part of our authentication mechanisms. Uh, we've done some work with a system called iCasework, and, and they, in order to enable that integration, they really needed that discovery piece. So that's been added in, and that's available now for all single sign-on integrations that may need it in the future. Uh, we've also done some background uh, HSTS uh, improvements, which is stuff just to help improve the security of the system uh, behind the scenes as well. The rest of the items on here, I've actually got videos that I'm going to kind of just quickly show, just to give you some examples of how those features work. Um, the first three are around GDPR. We had quite a bit of work leading up to May 25th to just make sure we got some important features in there for you. So I'm just going to start off uh, with the first feature here uh, regarding the, the privacy policy. So I start by entering my email address. And the next thing I need to do is confirm my email address by clicking the link in the activation email. This then takes me to the registration form where I enter my details. And then the final step is for me to agree to the privacy policy. Here I can see a link to the privacy policy, and when I click on it, it opens in a new tab. And once I'm happy, I can then click to agree and create my account. Looking at how this was set up, to enable this, administrators must go to Settings, User Administration, Registration, and check the box next to Enable Privacy Policy Link and checkbox. This will then cause the Privacy Policy web address to appear, where you then enter the URL of your privacy policy. Okay, so that was just a, a first step into adding that privacy policy capability into the registration process and how that's enabled um, as part of the, the first bit of GDPR. And then what we're showing you here is the ability to delete personal data from a CXM case. To delete personal data from a customer's case, find the case, and once you have confirmed that the case belongs to the customer making the request, click Delete Personal Data from the Actions menu on the case. If you do not see this option, this could be because the case type does not have the delete action enabled, or your user role does not have permission to perform this action. A pop-up will appear requiring you check a box before you can delete personal data. In this example, we have a misbin case, which is linked to an address and a person record, with some values populated, as well as a message, a case note, and a file. After clicking to delete personal data from the case, there are a few things to note. The case itself is not deleted, and the status is restored. The case will still appear in user filters and can continue to be processed if applicable. A blue ribbon appears showing which staff user ran the delete action and when. The link to the person record and address have been removed from the case. These entities have not been deleted, just unlinked from the case. If the person record requires deletion, then this must be done as a separate task. Values for all case fields that might contain personal data and have been marked as sensitive by an administrator are deleted. Here, the values for the comments and email fields have been deleted. Whilst the bin type field value is not deleted, as it does not contain personal data and is required for reporting purposes. All messages are deleted, all case notes are deleted, and all file attachments are deleted. And any letters or email alerts in case history would also be deleted. If it is felt that an item on a case that does not contain personal data should be kept, a case note or a message for example, then it must be noted outside of the case before deletion and it can then optionally be added back to the case manually after the deletion action has been carried out. 
and it's worth noting that this deletion action can be performed multiple times. When the case is viewed in a filter on the case list dashboard page, any value that has been deleted will show with a deleted label and will also appear as deleted in case exports. You should not rely on CXM's integration with any external systems to remove personal data from associated case inquiry or service requests in the integrated system. The specific tools provided in each system should be used directly to ensure that no personal data is left unnecessarily. To allow staff users to remove personal data from a case for a case type, there are three steps. First, choose which case fields you want the values to be deleted from when a staff user performs the delete action on a case. Go into those fields and check the box Contain Sensitive Data. It is recommended that this box is checked for all text, text area, telephone, email, or URL fields where personal data could be input, and leaving choice fields if required for reporting purposes. Secondly, you must choose which user roles you wish to be able to delete personal data from a case and enable for those roles the permission to delete personal data, which is done from the general tab of the roles page in settings user administration. Finally, decide which case types you want to allow staff with the relevant permission to be able to manually delete personal data from. And go to that case type in settings workflow and from the general tab, enable the toggle allow deletion of personal data from cases okay so in, so that was in in regards to actually just removing data from a case now if you get a request to actually remove a person's record um, then we've got a, a separate feature that was introduced uh, specifically for user that purpose user accounts can only be deleted by deleting the person record that they are linked to so to delete a customer's user account Begin by searching for their person record in the search box. Once you have found the correct person record, open it and under the actions menu, click delete. A pop-up warning will appear requiring the user check a box before the person and user account can be deleted. The person record and user account are now permanently deleted. The customer will no longer be able to log in to view their cases and this action cannot be reversed. In addition, if a person record is linked to one or more cases, then it cannot be deleted, and so you must unlink them. You can find all of the person's cases by navigating to the Cases tab of the person record. Click into a case, go to the Details tab, click Edit, clear the linked person record, which can now be deleted. It is also worth mentioning that if you do not wish to delete the user account link to a person record, for example, when deleting a duplicate person record, then you must unlink the user account before deleting the person record. And finally, in order to be able to delete a user account, the staff user's role must have the permission to manage people enabled, which can be found in the general tab within settings, user administration, roles. It is also worth noting that this is a licensed permission and users with a role with this permission enabled are considered as licensed users. So moving on from a lot of those kind of GDPR features. Uh, we also introduced uh, a couple of new email services. So as part of the CXM service as standard, we used to send emails through the Mailgun service. We actually have now uh, an Amazon uh, simple email service connector available in the CXM integrations hub. We've also got a beta version of using your own local SMTP servers. So if uh, you want to retain centralized control over email sending, then feel free to, to give that service a try as well. And we're, we're, we'd be great to get some, some feedback if uh, you try and use that service and if you've run into any problems so that we can get that out of, uh, out of beta as well. So we saw a video uh, earlier on of the Pitney Bowes confirmed two-way integration that we added. Uh, but effectively, we added the ability to map uh, inbound fields from confirm back into the CXM case type. Um, and that's all powered through the Pitney Bowes CRM agent uh, feature. Um, so kind of the second part of that, and this is reusable across all of the integrations that we'll provide in the future, is a, a rule trigger for when a case field is changed. So here uh, we've got a, a particular trigger for if, if the inquiry status field is changed 
and is changed to a value of closed, then we're actually going to send an email back to the customer. So you'll be able to use this for any future integrations that are providing that two-way update capability. We've also done a lot of work um, in a previous release uh, since, since the Academy around our case type import. Um, and this is basically, again, all around that library features that we've been adding and the new services we've been putting on the library. We've been hoping to make it much easier for you to take a CXM case type and import it into your system. So there's a lot of kind of um, detecting of at the point when you import a case type, have you got these particular fields set up in your system? If you've not, do you want to create them? Uh, or do you want to map them to an existing field that maybe has a different name? Um, and there's a whole basically suite of a process for you to actually import that case type. And further down the line, we'd like to bring the library directly into the software so that you can actually go and search for those case types and automatically import them through the utility as well. So that's kind of the direction of travel uh, that you'll see us going in uh, in the future. So in terms of uh, the roadmap for CXM, um, the work that's currently underway, so around about middle of July, uh, we'll be shipping some changes to the single sign-on um, whereby we'll be allowing you to specify if you wish to hide the uh, the sharing of data authorization step that currently appears on all the single sign-on integrations. Um, so you'll be able to, for example, describe how data is shared in the privacy policy feature I showed uh, and therefore turn this off so it's not uh, prompting the user to, to allow that sharing on a case-by-case -case basis. So that will be coming uh, pretty soon as well as we're making some uh, changes to accessibility, uh, quite a few of our customers in the room today have got um, contact centre staff who may be visually impaired uh, and so we're, we're making a few enhancements to the software at the moment as well in that area. Uh, we're also discussing some uh, further improvements to the Confirm integration with, with our colleagues from uh, Pitney Bowes uh, around about uh, files and bringing files into the system uh, as well at the moment as well. In terms of near term, uh, we've got changes planned for uh, customers to be able to uh, provide their customer change of address um, so that they can actually do that through, uh, the, through the My Account, uh, as well as planned improvements uh, around collaborating on CXM cases, uh, specifically around messaging and assignment and some improvements in that area. Uh, there'll be further GDPR improvements that we're going to be working on. So as you saw in the videos, there's a couple of usability enhancements we can add to, to take it to the next level so that when you're looking at the customer's case and all of the cases that they're assigned to, uh, we can make some improvements there so you don't have to go into each one individually uh, and do that, uh, as well as looking at data retention uh, policies. Uh, and integrations is, is basically a continuous theme, uh, as you'll see throughout the roadmap. Um, so we'll be in particular looking at systems like Northgate uh, Maps, um, Northgate Assure, uh, Whitespace, um, IDOCS Uniform. Pretty much, if you go and check out the Integrations Hub, you'll you'll see um, the the Trello board uh, is what I'm referring to there. You'll see that there's a, a whole host of different systems uh, that we're we're queued up and and ready to start looking at if we can get the the right partners to the table to have those conversations with us. In terms of some of the long stuff on here, um, uh, long-term stuff, uh, we're looking at uh, anywhere that we can improve the kind of reporting capabilities. So if there's any additional standard reports we can provide or whereby we can improve the API to allow more data to be obtained through external tools such as Power BI. Uh, there'll be some improvements coming down the road for things like that, um, as well as social sign-in, signing up for uh, Facebook, Google accounts, etc. In terms of uh, my business accounts, so Tom has been uh, and Abby have been working with representatives from the likes of Birmingham and, and Norwich uh, Council uh, to understand the use cases um, for, the, for the kind of ideal uh, account experience. 
Uh, that started with this first inception, uh, which I'll, I've got a video here which I'll play just so you can understand the context of some of the features that have already been added. As a user wanting to register as an organisation, when clicking register, I'm now taken to the register and sign in page that now provides the option to register as an organisation in addition to the existing option to register as a citizen. It is worth noting that users with the citizen account can also register as an organisation and use the same email address to manage both accounts, which will mainly be applicable to small business users who have one email address for work and personal matters. I start by clicking register for an organisation account, which takes me through the standard registration steps where I'm asked to verify my email address, then fill out my personal details. I am told that I have successfully created my account, asked to sign in, and then taken directly to a form where I must enter the name and address of my organisation, and I can optionally add other fields. In this case, the address that I have entered matches the address for two existing organisations with similar names, which are presented to me with the option for me to send a request to join to the administrators of the account. In this case, I'm going to ignore and create my organisation. After successfully creating my organisation, I am directed to the My Organisation account page, where I can see links to change my details, which are also shown on the Citizen My Account page, as well as links to see the details and users for my organisation. Any cases raised against my organisation are surfaced on this page and visible to all members of the organisation based on their permissions. This is a Jardu homepage and therefore you control what content is shown through the widgets. At the bottom I have a content widget with links to business related services and I'm going to click to apply for a skip permit. I'm taken to a form to apply for a skip permit where I must provide required information this form knows that I belong to an organisation and could prevent me from continuing if I did not have an organisation account, if that's how you want the form to behave. Fields from my organisation can also be pre-populated on the form. I'm now going to submit the form which raises a case linked to my organisation. Going back to the organisation my account page, the case raised now appears under the my cases tab. Next I'm going to click the link to view details for my organisation, then clicking on the cases tab I can see a list of cases from my organisation and I can click into the skip permit case that I've just raised. I can also see a users tab where as an administrator I can manage the users associated with my organisation. The first thing I'm going to do here is invite a colleague to join my organisation by clicking invite user from under the actions menu entering their email address and choosing whether to create them as an administrator or a standard user. Administrators will, by default, be able to see all cases for the organisation and manage other users, whereas standard users can only see cases that they have raised or that have been assigned to them and cannot manage other users. Having sent the invite, the invited user is taken through their account registration form and is then a registered member of the organisation. Back to the Users tab, as an administrator, I can at any time remove another user or change their role. Finally, if I sent an invite to a user that already belongs to an organisation, then they are sent an email with an option to ignore the invite or join the new organisation and leave their existing organisation. This is most likely when there are two duplicate organisations. Okay, so that's kind of where we, we got to um, a short while back uh, with our what we did refer to as the organisation, but we're now referring to as the, the My Business uh, piece. Um, and to kind of drive some of that, um, uh, Tom had worked with Norwich, and I think these were some of uh, Norwich's uh, early ideas around uh, kind of the different numbers of users and the types of uh, user that might be involved, what kind of activity they might be doing. Uh, so ranging from maybe like a sole trader through to a small to medium sized business through to a large organization. And some of the outcome from that is we've actually uh, been working to create some, some user personas. So these broadly boiled down to uh, a customer or citizen user, uh, a user transacting on behalf of their business only, 
a user transacting as a citizen uh, who also has a business account uh, using one email address. Uh, and you can see here, uh, I won't go through, through all the details of these different personas, but these are what we've been using to kind of guide uh, our kind of next step thoughts of, uh, of where we're going with the, the My Business account. So once we've drawn up our user personas there, and we can provide those if that would be of, of use to anyone, um, we kind of started some early paper prototyping um, to see from where we had with that first video that I just showed you and these user personas now, uh, what kind of improvements could we make to that experience? Uh, so this was kind of just an early uh, paper prototype, which we then kind of moved on to kind of a more digital version. But one of the, the key uh, inputs um, or takeaways from that work is that we're looking now at this kind of notion of a, of a my business um, kind of activities feed. Um, so this is, again, just very early thinking. Uh, we don't know this is actually the direction we're going to go. I'm just kind of putting it out there to get some feedback from you. So it'd be great to get your, your updates um, over lunch. But we're thinking, so we've had feedback around having separate my forms and my cases and kind of just consolidating that down into a view of kind of my activities. But these are just early concepts, uh, uh, so it'd be great to get your feedback on some of these ideas. Also kind of pulling out some of those pages uh, and actually embedding them uh, within the website uh, experience. So here changing the, the business details and seeing all of those kind of team members all kind of embedded throughout the website rather than directly in the, the CXM service. Uh, and if you get Tom uh, at your organisations any time in the future, and, and Abby, please do feel free to, to let them know as well if you've got any feedback on that.